The Life and Sad Ending of Eleanor Powell Eleanor Tory Powell was born November 21, 1912, in Springfield, Massachusetts, to Clarence Gardner Powell and Blanche Tory. A dancer since childhood, she was discovered at the age of 11 by Gus Edwards, head of the Vaudeville Kitty Review. When she was 17, she brought her graceful athletic style to Broadway, where she starred in various reviews and musicals, including Follow Through, 1929, which represented her first Broadway success, Fine and Dandy, 1930, and At Home Abroad, 1935. During this time, she was dubbed the world's greatest female tap dancer due to her machine gun footwork. In the early 1930s, she appeared as a chorus girl in a couple of early minor musical films. In 1935, the leggy, fresh-faced Powell made the move to Hollywood and performed a specialty number in her first major film, George White's 1935 Scandals, which she later described as a disaster because she was accidentally made up to look like an Egyptian. The experience left her unimpressed with Hollywood, and when she was courted by Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, she initially refused their offers of a contract. Powell attempted to dissuade the studio by making what she felt would be unreasonable salary demands, but MGM agreed to them and she finally accepted. The studio groomed her for stardom, making minimal changes in her makeup and conduct. She was well received in her first starring role in 1935, Broadway Melody of 1936, and delighted 1930s audiences with her endless energy and enthusiasm, not to mention her stunning dancing. MGM was headed for bankruptcy in the late 1930s, but the films of Eleanor Powell, particularly Broadway Melody of 1936, were so popular that they made the company profitable again, which would lead to her to become an MGM musical star a decade later. Powell would go on to star opposite many of the decade's top leading men, including James Stewart, Robert Taylor, Fred Astaire, George Murphy, Nelson Eddy, and Robert Young. Among the films she made during the height of her career in the mid to late 1930s were Born to Dance, 1936, Rosalie, 1937, Broadway Melody of 1938, released in 1937, Honolulu, 1939, and Broadway Melody of 1940. All of these movies featured her amazing solo tapping, although her increasingly huge production numbers began to draw criticism. Her characters also sang, but Powell's singing voice was usually dubbed Broadway Melody of 1940, in which Powell starred opposite Fred Astaire, featuring an acclaimed musical score by Cole Porter. Together, Astaire and Powell danced to Porter's Begin the Begin, which is considered by many to be one of the greatest tap sequences in film history. Following Broadway Melody of 1940, Powell was sidelined for many months following a gallstone operation and things changed somewhat for the worse, at least as far as Powell's movie career was concerned. Lady Be Good, 1941, gave Powell top billing in a classic dance routine to fascinating rhythm. The same happened with Red Skelton in Ship Ahoy, 1942, and I Dude It, 1943, although in Ship Ahoy, her character nonetheless played a central role in the story, and Powell's dance skills were put to practical use when she manages to tap out a Morse code message to a secret agent in the middle of a dance routine. In another routine from Ship Ahoy, she dances to the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra with Buddy Rich on drums, and the two perform a great musical partnership with the number Tallulah. She was signed to play opposite Dan Daly in For Me and My Gal in 1942, but the two actors were removed from the picture during rehearsals and replaced by Gene Kelly and Judy Carland. Later, the production of a new Broadway melody film that would have paired Powell with Kelly was also canceled. She parted with MGM in 1943 after her next film, Thousands Cheer, in which she appeared for only a few minutes to perform a specialty number, and, the same year, married actor Glenn Ford. She danced in a giant pinball machine in Sensations of 1945, released in 1944, for United Artists, but the film was a critical and commercial disappointment. 
Her performance was overshadowed by what was to be the final film appearance of W.C. Fields. She then retired to concentrate on raising her son, Peter Ford, who was born that year. She appeared in a couple of documentary-style short subjects about celebrities in the late 1940s. Overseas audiences did get to see one additional Powell dance performance in 1946, however. The compilation, The Great Morgan, included a number that had been cut from Honolulu. In 1950, Powell returned to MGM one last time in Duchess of Idaho, starring Esther Williams. Appearing as herself in a nightclub scene, a hesitant Powell is invited to dance by bandleader Dick Lane, played by Van Johnson. In May 1952, she emerged as a guest star on an episode of All-Star Review with Danny Thomas and June Havoc. Around this time, she has ordained a minister of the Unity Church and later hosted an Emmy Award-winning Sunday morning TV program for youth entitled The Faith of Our Children from 1953 to 1955. Her son, Peter Ford, was a regular on this show and would later find his own success as a rock and roll singer and as an actor. In 1955, Powell made her last film appearance when she appeared in Have Faith in Our Children, a three-minute short film produced for the Variety Club of Northern California, in which Powell asked viewers to donate to the charity. Powell divorced Ford in 1959, and that year, encouraged by Peter, launched a highly publicized nightclub career including appearances at Lou Walter's Latin Quarter in Boston. The athleticism which characterized her dance style remained with her well into middle age. Her live performances continued well into the 1960s, and in the early 1960s, she made several guest appearances on various TV programs, including The Ed Sullivan Show and The Hollywood Palace. She made her final public appearance in 1981 at a televised American Film Institute tribute to Fred Astaire, where she received a standing ovation. Sadly, Eleanor Powell died February 11, 1982, of ovarian cancer, aged 69, and is interred in the Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Hollywood in the Cathedral Mausoleum, Foyer Niche, number 432, Tier 3.